I'd like to welcome in my guest, Charlie Potter of Bayama Online. I want to talk about the game, Charlie, but first, how's it going? It's going well. Um, it's busy. You can tell the season's almost here, but that's a good thing. I like the routine and, and the grind of the season, so it's good to be finally back into that. And, and with this, uh, I definitely want to talk about the game. I want to get into some more maybe matchups and maybe things to watch for the game, but let's let's wrap up fall camp here. Maybe, you know, because when we talked at the beginning of camp, you were hoping to learn some things, and I know Alabama trying to replace a lot of guys, but is there a few things maybe uh, you learned from fall practices from fall camp that, that stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest question mark going in and for really a, a lot of the beginning of, of the preseason has been the wide receiver spot. And um, I think they've had some guys step up there. I think the group as a whole has come together. They're still kind of working on that timing and chemistry with Bryce Young. But, you know, with with a couple of guys that are brand new, to the program coming in this summer in Ohio State transfer, Jameis Williams and true freshman Jojo Earl. Um, you know, things like that take a little time. And uh, you know, I don't think it's a cause for concern or anything, but um, I think the receiving core as a whole has um, improved. I don't think it's their top question mark or um, for lack of a better word, concern at this point. Um, you know, the defense, we knew it was going to be pretty good because of how much they returned and how many young guys played last year. And it's, it's lived up to that billing. Um, I think one of the big things is I was just interested to see how a guy like Henry Toa Toa, another transfer uh, coming over from Tennessee, how he fit in with the defense. And he's stepped in right away and been one of the top leaders on that side of the football. So, um, you know, defensively, I, I think they're they're pretty set. Um, you know, you can still see some things move around maybe at corner. But, um, you know, I, I think we learned that the offense has to replace a lot. We knew that, but like, Right now, even, uh, there's still some competition on the offensive line, and that's not set. So uh, I think that's going to be one of the big things to watch heading into game week. I think from my standpoint, just looking at Miami, fairly uneventful fall camp. You know, returned a lot of guys, but I think the biggest news everybody wants to know is the availability of starting left tackle Zion Nelson. So from our standpoint, we have not seen him at practice for a couple of weeks. We're not out there every day. Um but the coaches were trying to say, you know, we had a viewing period of about 40 minutes the other day. And coach was uh, one of the coaches said, well, he was out there uh, just when not when you guys were out there. So take it for what it's worth. I, I think there are a little bit of concerns on his availability, although they are always saying that they think he'll be ready for Alabama. But at this point, you're kind of wondering, you know, how, how strong he'll be. So I think that's a big thing uh, out of Miami camp that it looks like they'll probably go as Jared Williams, if I were to guess, um, assuming if Zion's not ready. Uh, as ex, you know, as they expect. So we, we will see. I think that's a big thing. I, I think there's still some um, uncertainty. Maybe you touched on, you know, some of the Alabama uncertainty with position battles. I think Miami still doesn't really know what they have at linebacker. You know, they like Keontra Smith, but he's a very undersized guy. So there's some stuff there. I, I think just lastly, I think Miami will go with Cameron Harris as, as the top back. They were hoping to kind of establish one of the three guys, but I think all three of them will play if they're healthy. So just a little bit about wrapping up fall camp on both sides, but Charlie, let, let's get into the game here. Um, obviously a, a big one for both teams for different reasons. Um, for me, from my standpoint, I think the biggest thing with this game um, will be the Alabama running game. Can Miami stop it? Uh, is Alabama going to run wild? Like, like what we saw against some Miami teams last year, some teams did to Miami. Where, where do you kind of see that matchup being? And, and obviously, the and just your thoughts on the importance of a running game for Alabama in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think with a new offensive coordinator, with a new quarterback, and even though you lose a guy like Najee Harris, a first-round draft pick, I still think the running game and the running back position as a whole is, is a strength for Alabama. But um, – and, and I thought going into the season that they would lean on that. I still think they will. It's just what we talked about at the top, the offensive line – um, you know, can they get the, the, um, the best five guys on the field and to, to make up for what they lost? Because the offensive line they had last year, maybe as a group, might have been their, their best one of the Nick Saban era, and that's saying a lot. Um, those guys were road graders, and they have some of those guys back, and Evan Neal and uh, Emil Ekior, and they have some experienced guys. But um, the offensive line, I think, is the, the linchpin in that. But just from a running back perspective, Brian Robinson, probably their number one back, uh, you know, he's – Similar size to Najee Harris, runs a little differently. He's more of a north and south guy, a guy that used on you know, short yardage situations before. Um, 
And they have some young backs, I think, that can make a big impact. Trey Sanders sounds like he's fully healthy, which is good news because he was in a, a nasty car accident last year and um, he missed a season where he was starting to come into his own. And then younger guys like Jace McClellan and Roy Dell Williams in their second year could be factors. So I think they are excited about what they have at the running back position. But from a running game as a whole, uh, it's going to depend a lot on how this offensive line comes together here in this last week. Can you touch on a little bit? I, I know you've, you've talked a little bit about Jace, but just with with, with Brian, um, and, and I know you, you touched on about maybe his running stuff. Can you expand on him a little bit more, kind of what he brings to the table, what type of back he is, um, and, and the threat that he possesses there? Yeah, I mean, early on in his career, um, when he and Najee Harris came in, they were both in that 2017 class, uh, and they both had had the same hairstyle. They both had dreads, and it was hard to tell them apart uh, just when you'd go to practice and watch individual drills, but they're different players. And, uh, you know, Brian Robinson's not as good as a receiver as Najee Harris was. I think that's where the other backs come into the equation, guys like Trey Sanders and Jace McClellan. But, um, you know, Brian Robinson's a hard runner. Uh, he's hard to bring down. He's that bruising uh, type of back. Um, and the thing for the offense is important is he's been a leader um, because they had to replace all four of the team captains from the offensive side of the ball last year. And, um, you know, I think that's been kind of something they've needed because it's been a tough camp uh, for the offense and the team as a whole. So he's helped in that regard. I know that's not really of interest for Miami fans, but um, I, I think with Brian Robinson, he's going to be the first back on the field. And he's that guy that, again, he could be used in short yardage. He's going to be used near the goal line. But um, I definitely think that Alabama will take more of a running back by committee approach this season. So uh, there's, you know, two, three, four guys that maybe it's worth knowing. And, you know, and one of the reasons, not just with what Alabama has, why I think it'll be such an important part of the game, but just with Miami struggling at linebacker. But, you know, we touched on linebacker. I bring it up all the time. But Miami's defensive line has to do do well in this game. And, and I know that's what the Miami staff is hoping. They're hoping, in particular, the defensive tackles are able to plug up the middle and maybe provide some relief uh, against the run to kind of, you know, ease some of the pressure from the running back. So they're really hoping these veteran guys at, at defensive tackle, defensive end, can really um, – provide a push against the run. So that'll be something to watch for. Can Miami's front four stop the run? And at times in, in years past, they, they've done a good job of that. But this is a new group, you know, even with veteran guys, they've got new roles. So we, we will see. And, and Charlie, you talk about the offensive line. And I know right tackle in particular was, was one of those spots going into camp that you thought was uh, going to be one of those battles. And you touched on a little bit here, the, the offensive line kind of, how's it shaking out? And I know maybe if, even if there's some uncertainty do you feel like it can be a strong group or do you feel like it's going to be, you know, kind of a wait and see type of deal uh, for the year for, for this game? Actually, the way that you describe the defensive line is, um, you know, having some veterans, but still question marks is, is how I would talk about Alabama's offensive line, because Evan Neal is a guy that's probably going to be you know, top 10, top 15 draft pick next year. He's at left tackle. That spot's solid. Uh, Emil mean, like is going to be a starter at guard, probably right guard. That spot's solid. But then, the rest is newcomers. You know, JV and Cohen stepped in at left guard and, and done a nice job, I think, solidified himself. And then the right tackle position has been one that everybody's had eyes on really all offseason. And Kendall Randolph, who was a, a fifth-year senior, had really stepped into that role. But he sprained his ankle in Alabama's first scrimmage a couple of weeks ago and hasn't practiced. And that's opened the door for a guy like J.C. Latham uh, from down in IMG Academy to come in and and get a lot of first team reps. Um, Alabama is no stranger to starting a true freshman along its offensive line. And, you know, he kind of fits that pedigree as a five star, number one offensive tackle in the country to do that. But, um, you know, I think if healthy, Kendall Randolph would get the nod there. But the, the biggest surprise really has been at center. Um, you know, Chris Owens came back for his sixth year. He's one of those super seniors that took advantage of the COVID year. And uh, it, he just seemed like a plug and play guy, step in for Landon Dickerson like he did. Uh, in the college football playoff and, and, you know, just go about your business. But it's been a competition there uh, with Darian Dalcourt, who's going into his third season. And uh, a lot of that has to do with availability. Um, really, if you look at the guys that I've mentioned on the offensive line that have worked with the first team, nearly all of them, besides maybe JV and Cohen, have missed at least one of the scrimmages. So that availability has kind of hampered them from a continuity standpoint and a chemistry standpoint. So I, I don't think – it's a huge cause for concern. I think Alabama's offensive line will be pretty good. It's just they haven't had the availability that they've wanted to really get that unit together and get those reps that are needed. 
as we look at, you know, just staying with the off- offensive line, this kind of goes right in and kind of moving on transition into the quarterback the passing game situation with Alabama. And I know, look, Miami's going to try, I would assume based on their, their past with, with, with Manny Diaz at the coordinator, I feel like they're going to want to get pressure on the quarterback. Anytime you got a guy stepping into a, a new role like that, a younger guy. Um, but Alabama has to know that as well. They're, they're going to have to know, look, Miami's going to probably try to bring pressure. It's kind of like, uh, should be expected. I would assume. Do you have an idea on, on maybe how that's going to shake out with, either with the offensive line with Bryce, but Bryce has the, the ability to to move out of the pocket a little bit too. So, um, kind of how are you seeing the passing game? Maybe in addition to you know, kind of working with with Miami trying to apply pressure in the game. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I think from a pass pro standpoint, it's it's been tough to get a gauge on the offensive line because Will Anderson has really taken that next step. Uh, from year one to year two. I know I'm, I'm kind of going off script here a little bit, but uh, he's been a terror. So it doesn't matter who's in front of him. He's been able to get to the quarterback. So uh, Alabama's got some work in, in some uh, pass pro situations, and it has some work to do, I think. But, um, you know, with they can get creative, I think, from a, a pass protection standpoint, because if Kendall Randolph's healthy, but they feel good enough about J.C. Latham at right tackle – Kendall Randolph's really served as that pseudo tight end, that sixth offensive lineman. And, and that can combat some of that as, you know, they, they put him in there as a tight end. Um, and then you, you mentioned it, Bryce Young's ability to extend plays to, um, you know, do things with his legs is big for this offense. Um, I believe it was, I believe it was Tua that uh, he was asked about Bryce Young and talked about how he's, he's a faster um, you know, player than he was. And I think he's probably correct in that. And uh, we haven't really seen Bryce get to use that ability because last year, you know, he was in games and in garbage situations uh, because, you know, they were only playing SEC teams or, you know, in the postseason. Uh, so he didn't get a lot of opportunities. And then in the 8A game and the scrimmage, they're in those black no contact jerseys. So it's just touch football for the quarterbacks. But I think that's one of the things um, I'm most interested to see is just how effective he is at avoiding the rush and um, extending plays with his legs, because I think that's something he has in his arsenal. We just haven't seen it yet. I, I think it's um, that'll be advantageous when going against a, a Miami front that's probably going to be kind of aggressive with a first year quarterback with a new look offensive line. Uh, but I think Alabama has the tools to combat that. It's just a lot of those tools are pretty inexperienced. I touched on running backs, running game, how Miami will will counter that, and maybe that matchup. But I'm very also interested in seeing how Miami's defensive backs, uh, their corners in particular, how they're going to match up against you know the Alabama receivers. It feels like Alabama. You touched on Jameis, Jameis in there with a lot of speed. You know, Mechie, there's guys with speed um, at wide receiver. I'm curious about that matchup um, in particular too. Um, bright, you know, those receivers getting open, running open, if, if that's certainly going to make things easier for Bryce. And I, I do wonder if Miami is going to be able to run with Alabama on the outside. i would be very curious to see, especially if they're not getting pressure. So um, the, the receivers at, at Alabama, I know you touched on it earlier. Uh, there's a lot of names, you know, I, I know, you know, even down, a guy from down here, Ja'Cory Brooks, I, I know, you know, people know him. Um, how, how is this thing kind of shaking out? And do you expect how many do you expect them to roll out there against Miami? You know, are they going to go with multiple receivers? Do you think I'm short, you know, shorten it up or giving a lot of guys a try? How do you kind of see the wide receiver breakdown? And also with Mechie um, back, big numbers last year, he touched on his role kind of changing throughout last year, but just, you know, type of re- receiver he is and essentially handling that number one spot. Yeah, I think for me, I'm, I'm most curious to see the receivers and the rotation because. Mechie is that number one guy. Um, you know, I think he had a surgery or two this offseason and wasn't available in the spring. But when he's been available, he's been electric. He had a big play in, in the scrimmage this past weekend. Um, and so he, there's there's really no questions about him. I think he has a good rapport with uh, with Bryson's made his job a little easier. But the rest of the guys are, you know, they're they're sort of unproven. Uh, Slade Boulder will probably start in the slot. He's a guy that kind of got a, a bigger opportunity last year when Jalen Waddle went down, and he's made the most of that. Uh, and continue to work with the ones. And again, like I mentioned with Jameson Williams, he's on the offensive side of the ball. He's probably the person I've heard the most about just in terms of practice and the scrimmages and things like that. Uh, he's really come into his own and, and gotten comfortable with this new system. And 
you're right. I mean, the speed is what stands out about him. You know, he and Mechie can be those downfield threats uh, for Bryce and continue that kind of streak they've been on of, um, you know, long pass and catch plays and uh, those explosive plays. And then from, from there, I, th- I think that's probably the first three we'll see on the field. From there, I, I will be interested, like you asked, of how many exactly we'll see. Um, you know, they have a couple of second-year players, Javon Baker and Treshawn Holden, who have worked with the ones, worked with the twos. They've kind of been back and forth, and I think they'll be in the mix. But the person, you know, we hear about the most, really, whether it's from Nick Saban or the players, you know, defensively or offensively, uh, they've mentioned JoJo Earl, a true freshman from Texas. And I don't, I don't like to make comparisons, really, especially whenever – you know, there to a player like Jalen Waddle with how explosive he's been. And that's carried over to, you know, uh, camp with the Dolphins and getting ready for his rookie season. But the comparisons are, are easy to make because they're, they're smaller receivers. They're quick. They're explosive. They're from the state of Texas. And they look to be, um, or at least Earl looks to be following his first touch and ready to make an impact in his first season. So I think those are probably the six that I would look for. But I think a guy like Ja'Cory Brooks has had a good preseason. He can maybe be – a guy that comes off the bench a little. Um, they have another um, Florida guy in, in Thayo Jones-Bell who's entering his second year, who's done some nice things this preseason. Ajay Hall, another Florida receiver. Um, he had a big spring. Haven't heard a lot about him this preseason, but if he can do what he did in a day game, that'll be beneficial. So they've got guys. I think that's the the crux of the, the situation here. It's just what do they feel – uh, those guys can do how much do they trust them to make an impact. I, I don't know if we'll see just, you know, a revolving door of receivers in this game, but you know, six, maybe seven wouldn't surprise me. And then kind of flipping that to the Miami offense against Alabama's defense, you know, starting with DR King, a quarterback, look, if Miami's going to have a chance of pulling off this upset, DR King has to be great. Um, we've seen what it's take from other quarterbacks against Alabama. Um, you know, in for upsets or for wins uh, against Alabama efficiency, but you also have to, you know, it's not just, uh, you have to be productive. You, you know, it's tough to just be a game manager, you know, but you have to turnovers. You can't turn the ball over all those basic things. And I, you know, with De'Ari King coming back and, and, you know, earning a lot of praise and all this kind of stuff, but, you know, and last year, you know, he put up good numbers, you know, 23 touchdowns, five picks, you know, obviously you'd like to see the touchdowns a little bit higher. And those five picks, what stands out to me about that, he's a guy obviously that doesn't turn it all over too much, but two of those came against Clemson, one against North Carolina. That's three in the top two games. Um, so we will see how he does in this one. But yeah, I think he's got to be great. And I think he's got to be great with his legs and, and passing um, and just the Miami receivers. What stands out to me, and I should have, I could have mentioned this in fall camp, but it looks like Miami is just rolling out these three guys uh, with Mike Harley, Charleston Rambo, the OU transfer, and Keyshawn Smith, a second-year guy that just had a couple catches last year. It's really been those three guys um, from day one, you know, for the starting trio. And what stands out to me, they like the speed of those guys, but none of them weigh over 190, and I worry about maybe some of the matchups there, uh, just not having that that size, and, and we will see how that works. But talk about uh, maybe some of my – from that standpoint of Miami's passing game – what they're facing in the back because it feels like they've got some some stronger guys in that back four in, in the secondary there. Yeah, I mean it's it's the opposite of last year. Um, Alabama had one returning starter last year, and they have all but one returning starter this year, with the lone exception being uh, Patrick Sertan the second, who's now with the Broncos. And um, I, I think the secondary uh, can be a strength. Uh, probably not the biggest strength. I think the linebacker position is just stacked, and I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute. But um, the defensive backfield, you know, it's it's led by uh, Jordan Battle, another Florida guy. Um, yeah, he's somebody that Nick Saban really challenged in the spring uh, to step up into a leadership role, and he's really taken that head on this preseason. He and, and Demarco Helms have have really manned and, and led that group. And Helms is kind of the same boat as Kendall Randolph. He has a sprained ankle and has been out for a little bit. Um, but Alabama has some some guys they feel good about. I think Brian Branch is a, a Swiss Army knife. He's played every position in the secondary uh, this preseason. And his step, like if he has to start in place of DeMarco Helms, that's not a big deal. Uh, Brian Branch can, can hold his own and, and more than hold his own. So the safety spot is in good hands. Um, you know, at corner, Josh Shubb's back as a returning starter. He had a good season last year. Um, another Florida guy. Um, and then Jalen Armour Davis is he came in the same class with Sertan and Job, and he's gotten his opportunity. Uh, he's held really firm to that. 
uh, throughout the entire preseason. Uh, he's been a little banged up this week, but I, I don't think it's been a situation where he might lose his job. I do think they feel really good about the depth they have at corner because guys like you know, Marcus Banks is going into his third year. Um, some guys they added this offseason, Kyrie Jackson, the um, junior college transfer, Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, Terry and Arnold. They feel good about the depth at corner there. So um, the secondary seems to be in a good spot. And then, of course, you know, Alabama plays a star more often than not, a guy in the slot, their nickel defensive back. And Malachi Moore has manned that like he did last year as a true freshman. So um, I think the secondary, uh, you know, maybe where it was last year a concern, that's no longer the case. And uh, if those guys can stay healthy, uh, they can be a, a really solid group and probably produce a lot of first-team All-ICC uh, players. So I, d- I didn't mention about in the passing game, but tight end Will Mallory, 6'5 target, re- re- has the ability to get downfield. He's shown that in his career. How do you think Alabama matches up against tight ends in general? Um, I, I, we, we can kind of right, go, go right into linebacker play there because I do want to get into Miami's running game. But, you know, just that that will be a key as well because Will I think Will definitely has to provide um, – so, some opportunities for in the, in the passing game. It can't just rely on, on what Miami has a, a wide receiver. Yeah, I think defending the tight end and, and kind of in conjunction with that, the back out of the backfield uh, were two things Alabama didn't do very well last year. Um, you know, that being said, they faced guys like Kyle Pitts. They faced uh, Kenny Yarbrough at, at Ole Miss. They faced Jalen Weidermeyer at uh, Texas A&M. Those are three really good tight ends. Uh, and, and Kyle Pitts is kind of a, a unicorn when it comes to that position. And, uh, you know, Malachi Moore didn't have a great day defending Kyle Pitts. And I'm not comparing what Miami has to Kyle Pitts, but they definitely need to improve in that area. And I think whether it's Malachi Moore or one of those inside backers, I think they're maybe better equipped to do that because Dylan Moses was uh, really hampered by that knee last year. And I think you know it, it's crazy to say this, given the the career and the accolades that Dylan Moses had throughout his tenure in Alabama, I think they've upgraded at the inside linebacker position because Christian Harris is another year older. Uh, he's strong in, in coverage. And then they've added Henry Toa Toa from Tennessee, like I talked about earlier. And I think they feel really good about those two guys. They have a, a deep inside linebacker group and um, guys like Jalen Moody, Deontay Lawson, uh, they can cover as well. But the top two guys um, I, I think could be two of the best inside linebackers in the country. So um I think that's something they'll want to improve is defending the tight end and, again, the back out of the backfield. But I think they're a little bit better equipped to do that. And I think, you know, just staying with Miami's running game, like I said earlier, I think they're going to go with Cameron Harris. He's a guy that has a lot of experience. I, I just think he's been out there quite a bit more maybe than the other guys and it just feels like he's going to get that first opportunity. One thing about Cam, you know, and kind of just knowing him and kind of going all the way back to high school, he – He's one of those confident guys. Like he's excited for the opportunity to face Alabama. He's excited um, for everything that comes with it. He, he definitely wants to play at the next level uh, and do well. He's one of these confident type guys. I just wonder if Miami's offensive line is going to be able to provide that initial um, hold against the run, where you, you don't, as a running back, you'd hate getting the ball and all of a sudden the play's blown up before you even get a chance to do anything. And I, I do think that will be something to watch for in this game. I think it's going to be something to watch for early on to see if Miami's offensive line can hold up against that front seven um, and provide any sort of holes or opportunities for the run game. But uh, wh- what do you think, you know, just, just facing the run, um, you touched on the linebackers, what makes them tough uh, to go against uh, in, in the running game? Yeah, I, I think the starting four, um, whether it's Toa Toa, Harris, and then the outside linebackers and Will Anderson and, and Chris Rallen, um you're not going to find a better linebacking core in this country. Um, I don't even have to look. I just, I just, they, they've been great this preseason. Uh, Will Anderson has been unblockable. And I know that's, that's more from a pass rushing standpoint, but he can get in the backfield at will regardless of the play. And um, yeah, I, I think for me, um, Alabama has a deep defensive line and I think they will be good. Um, a lot of those guys, you know, the question is, can they stay healthy guys like LeBron Ray, who's been out with a groin injury. DJ Dell's been out this preseason. He's dealt with some things throughout his career. If they can stay healthy, I think it could be a really solid front seven. Um, they don't have that, you know, what people call a war daddy up front, guys like a Jonathan Allen, uh, Quinnen Williams, and Deron Payne. The defensive linemen we've grown accustomed to seeing in Alabama, uh, but they have some guys. I think there's some younger players that are going to step into larger roles. 
They have some guys that have been in the program for a while, uh, and, and they're sound at stopping the run. I think from the defensive line standpoint, it's more of, you know, can they get a consistent push on the passer? But I think in conjunction with the linebackers, they're very well equipped to stop the run. And um, I think that'll be an emphasis, just disrupting the pocket, disrupting the, the line of scrimmage uh, for the entire game. So whether it is you know, getting pressure on Derek or trying to stop the run, I think you know, that, that kind of fits into Alabama's wheelhouse right now. And, you know, before we wrap this up, I guess just in summary, maybe something in particular, like like um, a key to the game or maybe an area um, that you'll be looking at mostly. For me, I think personally, I think the first quarter, Miami has to stay in the game in the first quarter. I think that they've struggled in some of these big games against good opponents. Um, and essentially, they're just, it feels like they're out of it early. So I think that, you know, providing pressure, pressure on Bryce Young is key, you know, slowing down that running game early not falling behind. I think all those things are important um, from a Miami standpoint. Is there an area though, that maybe you're looking at, uh, you know, either a position group or maybe something in particular uh, to watch for in this one? No, I, I think we're of the same mind in that the line of scrimmage is going to be important on both sides of the ball, because you know, my biggest um, question going into this is the offensive line. And um, well, I know that Miami has some guys to replace. I mean, Alabama's offensive line is a work in progress right now. And so keeping um, Bryce Young's jersey clean because they're going to be in those nice red whites, even though it's a, a turf stadium, it's just the, the vernacular we're going to use there. Um, I, I think that's going to be key, keeping him upright, giving him time to make plays and get comfortable because he's going to have to play well early. Uh, the offense has a lot to replace, and it's going to be important for that offense line to play well uh, to give him time and to open up lanes for those running backs. And then on the flip side, um, you know, you mentioned it earlier. When Alabama is in trouble, it's because the opposing quarterback has a great game. And so getting pressure on D'Eric, um, you know, making him uncomfortable. Um, I know it sounds like from all accounts that, you know, that he's coming back well from that E injury, maybe getting pressure on him, making him think about that a little bit. You know, that that's just human nature. Um, I think Alabama is going to try to um, do that, make him uncomfortable. And that's, that's why I think just both lines are going to be extremely important in this matchup. Yeah. I'm just kind of touching on Derek before we wrap it up, but you know, he's a guy, a lot of experience. He's 24. You just turned 24 years old. Um, it's what you want in a game like this, especially if there's certain areas, maybe from a matchup standpoint that from a Miami standpoint that you don't feel like that they are ahead in the battle, but having that quarterback is so key. Um, and then we will certainly see, you don't really know um, what a quarterback's all about until they get out there and in live action with Bryce Young. I know obviously people are excited about him. Um, we will see. I, th I feel like with this one, we will see a lot of things early on. Um, and I know anytime you've covered college football a long time, you know that it, it's a long game. A lot happens in four quarters and just when in the first quarter isn't going to be good enough. Um, but certainly I, I feel like a lot of signs, you'll, I feel like you'll get a good sense on this team on both these teams a little bit earlier in terms of this matchup, I, you know, kind of just wrapping this up, but just one of the things with running game in particular, these openers, you know, tackling, I think that's always a concern from coaching standpoint of how well do they tackle in the first one? It's real live action. I know both teams have scrimmages and things like that, but this is um, a different animal whenever you play a season opener. Um, so certainly tackling ability and not missing tackles and things like that will be key in this one, but should be exciting. Charlie, I, I appreciate you, you jumping on here and obviously talking about fall camp early going into it. And I, I definitely want to catch up with you here. We will see how this one goes. Uh, exciting. A lot of storylines on both sides, but it was great talking to you, man. And, and hopefully uh, the season goes well for you and, and best of luck and everything at BAM online for sure. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this game. It's, it's the end of an era. This is Alabama's last neutral site opener. Well, I mean, I guess now we'll wait and see what happens with the alliance and everything going on. But it's home and homes after this, so it's uh, it's going to be exciting for a big matchup in one of these NFL stadiums to to get to watch the open up this season. Looking forward to it. Sounds good, man. Take care. You too.